Welcome to Women on the Rise Lightning Talks, which we explore topics around career growth, leadership, work-life balance, mentorship, challenges, and lessons learned with our experienced Pioneer alumni. Just some housekeeping before we uh, start our introductions. You know, our Lightning Talks are just purposely designed to be short so we can be conscious of everyone's time. Uh, we kindly ask that you submit any questions that you may have via the Q&A tab. It's gonna be right down below. And make sure you upload the ones that you find most interested in having answered live. We will try our best to get to everyone's questions, but in the case that we don't, our guest today has graciously agreed to answer them after the event. And so with those two things out of the way, my name is Marilyn Gracia from the Alumni Association Board, and I will be your moderator for today's events. Today, we are joined by alumna Sabrina Washington, who graduated from Cal State East Bay in 2005, summa cum laude, with a BA in Mass Communications. Sabrina began her career shortly after graduation as a television news anchor and reporter in Oregon and then Massachusetts, where she won an Associated Press Award for investigative reporting. Missing her home state, California, <laughs> Sabrina moved back and received an Edward R. Murrow Award and her first Emmy Award while working in Bakersfield. She would go on to win six additional Emmy Awards. And when Sabrina left television journalism, she decided to use those skills to start her own video marketing company, Luna Light Productions in 2015. She has clients throughout the US and has served as the media director for California State Fair from 2016 through 2019. Sabrina attributes her success to the education and hands-on experience she gained from Cal State East Bay. Sabrina, thank you so much. I just want to thank you for joining us for today's conversation. Hey, thank you so much for having me. I'm very excited to be here and to answer questions and enlighten in any way that I possibly can. Yeah, so let's get started. You know, let's just start off by, can you just kind of share your career path and really how you came to establish your own video marketing company, uh, Luna Light mm -hmm. Productions? Yes, so I, it actually all started really at Cal State East Bay, formerly Cal State Hayward, because <laughs> when I went, when I started there, it was Cal State Hayward, and then my senior year um, in 2005 is when it made the switch to Cal State East Bay. So um, yeah, I, it all started really with the uh, video production classes that were taking place uh, at Cal State East Bay and the what was formerly Warren Hall and in the lower area there in the video lab and just messing around with the cameras and the video editing equipment, um, things like that, which gave me a lot of really good hands-on experience. And then I was also able to get an internship at KTVU Channel 2 when I was also a student there. So I was an intern for two years and got to go out with reporters and see how everything ran at the news station, which really confirmed like that's what I wanted to do as a career. Um, fortunately, when I was interning there, I made friends with the floor crew that worked in the studio and also with the photographers. So whenever I would go out with a reporter, I could shoot um, stand-ups and put together a reel, which is what you need when you're submitting to different TV stations around the country to get hired. So there's also that aspect of it. So I was able to put together a really professional looking reel. And then with the hands-on experience I got at Cal State East Bay, I was able to you know, shoot and edit. And when you start in TV news, um, well, <laughs> it's like this way now, but especially back then, when you started in TV news, you basically did everything. You wrote the scripts, you shot the video, you edited the video, um, and then you presented it on air. So that hands-on experience was really, really valuable. Yeah, so let's mm -hmm. just dive into your earlier experience as, you know, as a reporter and news anchor. Mm -hmm. I did read about some of your experiences during that time from going undercover at high mm -hmm. schools to even yep. solo anchoring the morning news. Mm -hmm. Out of 10 years of experience, you know, what would you say was one of the most impactful um, reporter anchor experiences that you've had the opportunity to partake in? Um, I learned something in every single market. So uh, to kind of continue on the first question and also as it slides into this one, um, I was really fortunate that I essentially had a job pretty much waiting for me once I graduated. So um, I had sent out tapes, my resume to a bunch of stations all over the country, um, had some interviews, went up to Oregon on, I want to say, a 
Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday uh, for an interview, an in-person interview, got to see the community. And um, that Saturday or that Sunday is when I graduated from Cal State East Bay. And then the following Tuesday, like two days later, I had gotten a job offer and was up up to Oregon. So I was there for 18 months, uh, got some hands-on experience, um, and then I once again applied to a bunch of different places when my contract was coming up and had gotten one job offer in Oregon with a sister station, another job offer to anchor and report in Massachusetts. And really it just came down to um, while I didn't know anybody in Massachusetts and had never lived on the East Coast or even knew anybody out there, <laughs> um, I, I looked at it and said, when am I going to ever get this opportunity again? And it's a matter of just, I think, saying yes to the uncomfortable decision, um, the thing that maybe is a little bit scary and uncertain, and to just go for it, mm -hmm. because that's usually when you grow is when you're challenged. And so moved out to Massachusetts. I lived there for two years and three New England winters. Um, <laughs> Very different experience being a native Californian. We have, yes. you know, we have snow, but we drive to it and we drive away. You can't do that on the East Coast. <laughs> um, and really, we were talking about the Associated Press Award that I won for investigative journalism. So uh, I, at the time, happened to look very, very young. And um, my news director at the time had gotten kind of a news tip from she was a parent and had heard from some other parents that mm. in the community um, a lot of the high schools their metal detectors um, while they had metal detectors or security precautions in place like none of the metal detectors were on um, there really wasn't any like strict security measures taking yeah. place and so um, they decided okay you look like you're a teenager you're going to go to a high you're going to go to a bunch of different high schools and see if you can get in and we'll put things in your bag that should set off a metal detector so i had a screwdriver a box cutter um i think a hammer something that should have set off metal detectors essentially and um went to four different high schools and none of the metal detectors went off um at one of the high schools they actually had like id card checks um mm -hmm. and so i was thinking oh man i'm not going to get in and I was there with a photographer who was also young looking and we're standing there saying, what do we do? Um, should we just go? And we realized that the place where they were checking IDs, we realized, and they were checking people's names against a list. We realized that they actually weren't really referencing the list very closely and thought, oh, I think this is just people pay, if they mess, they forgot their ID, they just pay a dollar and they get like a temporary badge. So I gave the person a fake name. <laughs> <laughs> and um, got led into the high school with a uh, mm -hmm. yep. Yeah, and same thing with my photographer. And um, basically, we did it responsibly, though. So we went to all these different high schools. We got the video of me going in, um, and then we had a comp um, a conversation with their superintendent to let them know, hey, this is what we discovered. Um, we want to give you time to implement safety measures before we release this report. And mm -hmm. so uh, we worked with the the school district to help them increase security measures to make sure that their students were safe. Um, so that's how that all came about. And so using, you know, what you have at your disposal, right? Um, I happen to look young, so <laughs> they were able to use me for this story and put it together. Um, so as you mentioned earlier, I missed California. Seasonal affective disorder is a real thing for sure. Um, out on the East Coast, they don't get a lot of sunshine. So moved back to California, learned the very, very valuable lesson of if you get a job offer, make sure you get something in writing before you decide to pick up and move across the country. Um, I had actually gotten a job offer at a different TV station. And then when I had come out to California um, and called up the news director at that station, she had said, oh, there's a hiring freeze. So, <laughs> um, and then that's how, actually that's how I magically ended up in Bakersfield. So I sent tapes out and um, once again, those resume reels um, and news director in Bakersfield called me and I was like, all right, I just need to work. Um, I wanna be in California, so here we go. And it just happened to work out that that's where I won my first Emmy and was given the opportunity to be a storyteller, to anchor. Um, and that first Emmy was for uh, one of the newscasts that I did, the weekend newscast that I anchored while I was there. It was a really exciting time. Um, learned some great storytelling uh, tidbits and ways to be a better storyteller when I was also working in Bakersfield. So sometimes the setbacks that you get um, can actually turn out to be really great opportunities. So yeah. Um, it led sure. to such positive outcomes and mm -hmm. 
I think relocating itself is something very nerve wracking, especially right out of right out of school. But I mean, you did it. California winters are not the same <laughs> other places. So <laughs> kudos to you for that. And, you know, speaking of setbacks, um, you know, often when we have a goal, we, we do come across hurdles, barriers, mm -hmm. some that are specific to women or minorities, you know, and it just really makes the journey that much more difficult. So mm -hmm. what were some barriers that you encountered in your journalism uh, journey and how did you work through them? So interestingly enough, um, after I left Bakersfield, I came up to Sacramento, which is where I'm based now, and I'm working for a TV station here. And interestingly enough, one of the things that I, I've always been um, a very type A personality. I like mm -hmm. to have like my hand in every piece of the, the story that I would put together. So um, while I worked with photographers and editors, um, and whatnot, my preference was always actually to shoot and edit my own videos. And so um, there was one story in particular where I felt it, uh, it was covering um, at one of the military bases out here, um, a, a helicopter that was being retired and another type that was being brought in. And um, you could just tell like when I walked up with my camera, um, yeah. like my tripod and my giant camera, to go cover this story, you could sort of tell on the the person's face um, when I was approaching them about, hey, I'm the reporter who's covering this, that they could see like, oh, they just sent you. Um, so kind of experiencing a little bit of um, discrimination, you could say, for being a female. Um, mm, I, I'm five foot respect. one. <laughs> I'm five <laughs> foot one. So uh, everybody would always make comments about how like, oh, that camera is bigger than you and things like that. Um, mm. And I think just that assumption, because I am a female, that maybe I'm not as good of an editor or I'm not as good as a photographer as a reporter that or a TV station that sent a reporter and a photographer. And so um, what was interesting is another crew or another TV station was there. They had sent a, a, a photographer and a reporter. And what was interesting, they like took them right away to go shoot this helicopter and go get um, all this information right away. And I was telling them, hey, I'm on a deadline. I, I need to get this done in order to make the five o'clock news. And so um, I, I just kept getting pushed off, pushed off. And so I was like, you know what? I'm going to make this an incredible story and they're going to regret <laughs> um, treating me this way. And so interestingly enough, that was a piece that I put onto a, a compilation that I submitted and ended up winning one of the video journalism Emmys for the San Francisco region. So um, I've definitely encountered some, some hardship, I think, from being a female and just assumed that I'm not maybe as mm -hmm. good of a editor or a photographer because I am a female, whatever that may be. Mm -hmm. I mean, what a way to just make lemonade out of lemons, especially in that given situation. Mm -hmm. And it's really quickly is, you know, media and journalism itself and reporting, is that a male dominated field, would you say, or industry? Um, Certain aspects. I, I want to say that a lot of the photographers and a lot of the editors tend to be male, um, especially when it comes to, I, I've attended a lot of different workshops for storytelling. So um, ways to uh, write a script a certain way to make it engaging, to make it surprising, um, ways to shoot video. Um, and you tend to encounter a lot of um, men more so on the photographer side. And the way that the news industry works is if you are a photographer, you're also the editor for the piece. Um, and there's not too many female video journalists mm -hmm. uh, that are recognizable or well-known or even storytellers. Um, anybody who is familiar in news knows the names of John Sharifi, Boyd Hubert. Um, down south, there are a couple of incredible storytellers in the San Diego market, um, but they all tend to be male. And so to have somebody that does everything, the shooting, the editing, the writing, and presenting it on camera, um, it's a little bit more rare to have a female who does that. Mm, thank you for sharing that. Mm -hmm. You know, it's obvious your, your work ethic is clearly impeccable, you know, as you've been recognized for your work, including, you know, seven Emmy Awards. You know, for those in the audience, you know, an Emmy Award is, it's an American award that recognizes excellence in the television industry. 
And so, um, Sabrina, can you just share your experience about the first time you were awarded an Emmy and what that meant for you and your family? Mm -hmm. um, Emmys are, are quite the, the spectacle, for sure. Um, so when I was down in Bakersfield, I was the weekend anchor when I was there. And again, always because I am a type A personality and like to help out and whatnot. And it's, Bakersfield is a smaller market as well. So things like um, jumping in to help write the, the scripts, um, to help the producer pull video or even edit video and get it ready for the newscast is something that was very common. Like everybody sort of pitches in. Um, and Aaron, who I, who's my producer that I worked with, um, he and I, we had a really great relationship. Um, he was a fantastic producer. And so he was familiar with the Emmy submitting process. And so when we talked about, we had a great newscast um, of some really bad weekend weather, um, some really incredible storms and flooding that had happened down in Bakersfield. And we looked at each other after we put together a really clean newscast um, and talked about different ways to cover the, the storm itself um, and how to pre present it in a way that was engaging and exciting for the audience that was watching at home. Um, we talked about it afterwards and we said, this is something that we're going to submit. And it's because the way it works with Emmys is you have to submit to the actual um, academy. So there is an actual academy, there's people, <laughs> there are members who when you submit, they watch your piece and they uh, judge it and deem it whether or not it is worthy to receive um, an Emmy award. And we were really fortunate. We went to the award ceremony. It was held down in San Diego. It was incredibly exciting. I believe at the time it was us and maybe three other news stations that were up for that category of weekend newscast. And it, something that we weren't expecting and we were one of the first awards to go up as well. So um, that was really helpful because depending on where you fall in say an Emmy award, um, cause it's a dinner event and things like that. You may or may not eat <laughs> depending on when your award is <laughs> announced cause you're just so nervous, yeah. um, but super exciting. Um, my dad was my date. He was not on board with my career choice of being in TV news until that night. <laughs> mm. <laughs> so, uh, when I told him when I was still going to Cal State East Bay that I had changed my major from English to mass communications and he asked, what do you want to do with that? And I said, well, I'm going to be a reporter. And he said, well, you know, you have to be really good looking to be on TV, right? And he said, well, you can also work really hard and be <laughs> just a really good reporter. Um, so he was always really skeptical of it from the move to Oregon to Massachusetts down to Bakersfield, but it wasn't until that night that he said, okay, this is, this is the career path. All right, I'm on board. Wow, <laughs> wow that's so exciting. And you did that seven times. <laughs> seven times, yes. Um, one more in Bakersfield, and then the other five came from when I was up here in Sacramento, and three of which were being uh, for a video journalist. So the person who writes, edits, shoots, and presents everything. Um, so those were probably um, the most meaningful awards just because not many women win them or get them amazing such such so amazing and i think it's i really enjoy these talks because i love hearing about all the accolades that our fellow alumni are achieving you know after graduation and you know you know speaking of our alumni uh one of them did um send in a question earlier and you know they're interested in how you started your own business and what resources were available to you i mean you worked in media for 10 years so mm -hmm. What feelings were you experiencing when you decided to make that transition? And um, were there any steps that you took to prepare yourself to take that plunge? So um, I have an interesting story of how the business even all came about. So I had left TV news. I um, had these skills that I had acquired. So I knew how to talk on camera. I know how to write scripts. I know how to um, submit things by in a deadline. I know how to edit. I know how to shoot and write. So um, while I was trying to sort out what next steps that I wanted to do, um, interestingly enough, because I was just known in the market and the, I was visiting a friend of mine in downtown Sacramento and was in the elevator with him. And it just so happened that the 
friend's office was in the same building as the California Restaurant Association. And so their president and CEO, Jot Condi, uh, was in there and he was talking with my friend and um, they get off and, uh, or he gets off and then I, we go and we have our meeting. Um, and then that evening, I actually get a text message from that friend that I had visited and he said, hey, uh, Jot was wondering, he, if you were doing anything right now, um, he wanted to ask you some questions about a project that they're thinking about for the California Restaurant Association. And it turned out they had been kicking around this idea of doing video newsletters. So basically they do email marketing, um, mm -hmm. email newsletters that were okay. They weren't getting a lot of engagement of uh, very low open rates or okay open rates, lower read through and click through rates. And so they were thinking, well, if we put together kind of like a two minute news package of things that they need to know based upon what's in that newsletter, um, let's try it out and see. And so he approached me, said, I want you to be the person who is on camera for it. I want you to be the person who writes the script, who shoots it, who edits it. And I said, okay, cool. This is something I can do. So it's a matter, I think, of just saying yes to the opportunities that come about. And um, we did a beta version of the, the video. I had originally was supposed to go down to California Restaurant Association um, and shoot these videos. And just for the beta version, I happened to shoot it in my kitchen and they really liked it because they didn't want something that was overproduced. They wanted it more mm -hmm. grassroots. And so when I sent it to Jot, he's raved about it. He's like, oh my gosh, this looks like a YouTube blogger thing. I love it. <laughs> <laughs> and, um, so I just started shooting these things in my kitchen. And then from there, just kind of word of mouth spread because other associations were on that email marketing. And so that's kind of how I've acquired my clients is through sort of word of mouth and people seeing the videos and have just gone on to California Grocers Association as a client. And of course, with everything that's going on in the pandemic, they've been super impacted and very busy based upon everything. So um, that's kept me very busy as well. So I think it's a matter of, in terms of resources, you've got skills. Um, sometimes you may not think you have skills, but you totally have skills. Uh, put those to use. Um, I had a DSLR camera, that's how I shot until I acquired enough funds by doing this business to get like a real camera, um, real lights. And then we converted our mother-in-law unit into the studio spaces, which is what you see be behind me. And um, yeah, I think it's using the resources that you just happen to have available, looking at the skills mm -hmm. that you have uh, can be put towards I believe creating your own business. Um, and fortunately, I loved what I did. And I think that goes a long way too, um, of starting your own business, being passionate yeah. about something. Most definitely. I, I loved what you said about, you know, using what you have, because that's something that I like to live by, using what, do what you can with what you have. Mm -hmm. um, another thing you mentioned too, is just, I see this pattern of you, you're constantly, you took every opportunity that you said, you know what, I'm going to run with it. And look, it, it just put you on this trajectory of where you are today. And that's, it's really nice to see that come full circle. Mm -hmm. uh, let's see, uh, another one of our alumni wanted to know if you had any advice for those who want to make a career change mm. and if you're taking on any marketing interns. <laughs> <laughs> so interestingly enough, um, when I had also was in the beginning of starting the business and I had a friend of mine who I, uh, who's a chef, a professional chef in the Sacramento area. And he happened to be the official state or a chef for the California State Fair. At the time, they were looking for a new media director. And um, he thought of me and said, hey, you should apply. And so I said, okay. <laughs> um, and applied for that and ended up, that was back in 2016 and ended up getting hired on. And it's a seasonal position. So every summer time that kind of runs from sort of March, April until September is sort of fair season. And uh, did that for, done that for the last four years. Um, so making that transition into marketing was also something new and different um, because while it is media director and doing outreach to the TV stations and the radio stations and the newspapers that are in the Sacramento area. So unfortunately I had a connection with many of the people who worked there, but to be on the marketing side is very different um, and putting out, you know, 
social media posts and uh, looking at things like engagement and what gets clicks, what gets watched, um, putting things like that together. So I actually ended up um, going back to school and took a couple classes on marketing itself and putting together sort of branding and um, having that knowledge as well. So I, I would also say that if you're looking to make a career change, looking at what that career is and maybe looking at taking some classes maybe at a community college or even at a CSU that happens to be in the area to give you a little bit more experience. So when you do apply for a marketing job, you know what the heck you're talking about or whatever the job happens to be. Thank you so much. Mm -hmm. Let's oh, pivot sorry. A bit. And about the oh, interns, I, 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 I realized that was another part. Um, yes, I am always looking for qualified people. Um, this will come up later, but I am a new mom. I have a four month old. <laughs> and um, while I do rely on my editor to help me out with that, uh, because normally what I would do is because I am the type A personality, I would normally be editing at least half of my videos. I've given them all to my editor and I know he swamped so I'm always looking for an editor or even somebody to help out with marketing um, to do the outreach because as I mentioned earlier, a lot of my clients come from word of mouth. So this year, I'm, at the beginning of the year before the pandemic all started and, and whatnot, I was mm -hmm. said, this is gonna be the year I do active marketing and outreach um, to try and acquire more clients. So obviously things have taken kind of a dip, but i um, always looking for somebody to help out with that marketing and outreach to help grow the business as well. So. Um, Yes, looking for an intern possibly is. Awesome. I hope everyone heard that pioneer <laughs> opportunity alert. <laughs> so let's talk about hashtags. I, I wanted to first congratulate you on uh, Baby Washington. <laughs> you know, being a new mom is not an easy feat, especially during the current climate. <laughs> what are uh, some things that have helped you really manage your time with your business and with being a new mom? Uh, so leaning on some of those contacts that I had made when um, I was working at the California State Fair, another TV person, former TV personality um, in this market, and she was, after my first year at Fair, she got brought on board the second year, and um, so we got got to tag team it as co media directors. And so her and I have a great relationship. Um, so leaning on that friendship when I needed to take my quote unquote maternity leave, um, she presented presented and was the person who appeared on camera. Um, during that time. And like I said, I leaned on the person who helps me with editing and said, I'm going to just give you all the videos if that's cool with you. And he said, yes, I need the money. So, <laughs> um, so we did that um, for about a month. And like I said, I work from home, so it's, it's pretty easy. I don't have to go into an office mm -hmm. per se um, and can just come into like my studio space and work uh, so that's been really helpful, uh, but I think also being a new mom and just being able to ask for that help. And I think that's one of the most valuable things that I've learned as I've gone on through my career from being a person who had to do everything herself, who had to shoot, who had to write, who had to edit and had to control everything to be able to just take a step back and say, all right, I've got good people. I trust you. And to just lean on that and just know that it will get done um, and to just have clear and open communication with clients and let them know, hey, there's going to be mm -hmm. a different person that you may be seeing for a few weeks or uh, I will try my hardest to make sure that the video process uh, still runs smoothly in a way that you understand, but to know that changes could happen because I won't be attached to my email all the time. Mm -hmm. So clear communication, I think, is also really valuable. Great advice, thank you so mm -hmm. much. And uh, just one more hashtag before we kind of wrap things up. Um, I saw you use this one quite often. Uh, mm -hmm. The future is female. I personally love it. And I kind of just want to learn more about the intention behind that. Um, so I think really I've, from that moment of when I had that encounter um, on that one story where it was very obvious that the person did not think very much of my skills because I was a female reporter, female video journalist. Um, I think that's always kind of motivated me. Um, you know, there's no greater motivation than when somebody tells you you can't do something, right? So, <laughs> um, 
um, from there, I, I took that and just wanted to turn it into something that, you know, just because I am a female doesn't mean I don't have value, that I don't have skills. I have value. I have skills. And sometimes they're just even better than, um, than anybody else's, not necessarily speaking about um, gender. It's just, this is what I can bring forth to the table. And so um, I've always tried to put that first and when I had my daughter, that was one of the things also that I really wanted to champion. Um, mm -hmm. Because you hear it a lot growing up that, um, that girls are supposed to be a certain way or that you're not supposed to do certain things or you're not supposed to move across the country to a place or yeah, to a place that you, you don't know or where you don't know anybody. Like it's, it's so unsafe. Um, I, there was one instance uh, a few years back, I decided to go to Ireland and I went by myself um, and I met some other American travelers. And when they asked like, oh, are you traveling with anybody? I said, no, I'm, I'm by myself. And they said, oh my gosh, that's so brave for um, a young lady to do. And I thought, well, it's a first world country and the predominant language is English. So <laughs> um, I, I'm, I'm okay. Uh, but I think just to put that out there and to to be bold and to um, set a good example, I think is really what's important. I think what a lot of um, women need to see, I think it's something that also women of color need to see. Um, I'm half Asian, I'm half Hispanic. And that's something also that I was really proud to sort of champion as well of representation and being on mm -hmm. TV, something for you know audience members to see. Um, it's, I think it's really important to see women and also women of color kind of in that position as well. Thank you so much. That was mm -hmm. such an insightful response and I love it. And so just really quickly, you know, if, if people want to connect with you, how can they uh, find you? So I am on social media, <laughs> uh, Facebook. Uh, I, you can find me uh, with the journalist Sabrina. That's one of the easiest ways to find me, facebook.com slash journalist Sabrina. On Instagram, it's at Luna Light Productions. So Luna, L-U-N-A, Light, L-I-G-H-T, and Productions. Um, and interesting story. If people always ask, like, where does the Luna come from? It was my nickname growing up. Um, and so it's just something that I've always answered to. And it just so happens that, you know, the moon happens to be feminine energy. So it worked out nicely, even in that regard as well. Um, my email is Sabrina at lunalightproductions.com. And so you can find me on all the different ways. Mm -hmm. And for those listening, uh, please, uh, you can go ahead and check the chat box for that information. And Sabrina, with that last question answered, mm -hmm. we are out of time. I just want to thank you for joining us today as our guest on Women on the Rise Lightning Talks and for sharing so much of your journey, experiences, and advice with our fellow alumni. My pleasure. And to our alumni, pioneer alumni who have joined us this evening, thank you so much for joining the conversation.